a lot of people believe that 3D printing is the future of manufacturing. Although if you look at the action in pure play 3Ds, which you know we have not liked, it's clear the market disagrees because they've been flat- flatlining for years. Turns out this technology is great for making lots of one-off prototypes, but it's a lot less efficient at mass marketing. But what if 3D printing was merely a way station on the road to even better technologies? Consider the case of Carbon. That's a privately held company that's come up with a 3D manufacturing alternative. They call it digital light synthesis. Carbon's platform uses light and heat to transform a pool of liquid resin into an actual product, allowing them to create finished products at mass scale. That's what we've been looking for. The tech is now used for everything from auto parts to personalized football helmets. Last week, though, there was a new wrinkle. We learned that Carbon co-founder and CEO Dr. Joseph D. Simone was transitioning to executive chairman with Ellen Coleman, the former CEO of the old DuPont, an old friend of the show, taking over as new president of Carbon. That's quite an endorsement, one that suggests that this company is entering the next stage of its growth trajectory. Let's see deeper with Dr. D. Simone and Ms. Coleman. We get a better read on what's happening here, the leadership transition, and what's the future for Carbon. Thank you so much to both of you for coming on. This is very exciting to have both of you. Ellen, you're a big-time CEO, so what attracts you to this private company that's just on the launching pad? Well, right after I left DuPont, I got a call from a board member at Carbon who said, I want you to come out and see this technology. First thing I did was check Joe D. Simone through with the researchers at DuPont. Okay. They said he was the real deal. Went out, fell in love with the technology, really feel, all my years of manufacturing, really feel that this technology could really bridge to a digital manufacturing platform and do so at a scale and a cost that was relevant in manufacturing. And so joined their board. And I've spent the last three and a half years there. And this transition came up. I thought it was a great opportunity. Okay, so Joe, we talk about at scale and actually real product. And we've got some here. Maybe you can just point them out what this one does, because it seems pretty impressive. Yeah, that's a fully bioabsorbable material we're doing in partnership with J&J and many other companies. So this is a digitally printable material that serves a mechanical function in the body, but after a few months is fully bioabsorbed and transitions to your own tissue. That's extraordinary. And then this has been approved. No, it's, it's on its way. It's on its so way. It's, yeah, it's on its way, but we've been working with J&J for now. Can we, you know, and what are some of the body parts that it's worked well with? Well, on? so the, the plan is in surgical applications to help you uh, post-surgery, uh, maintaining structure. We also think it's available for uh, uh, linking nerves, nerves back together. Which has never been able to be done. Shoulder repair, meshes, all sorts of applications. Oh my God, that would be the holy grail. Yeah. So I could see why someone like you, who understands both health care, yeah. uh, understands enzymes, understands things that are really pretty ethereal, would be attracted to this. Well, I mean, think about application development. That's something that DuPont honed over decades. Right. And this is absolutely a wonderful platform. The front end of it has to be applying it in ways that you optimize that model, and you can really get that scale and get up that curve very quickly. Wow. Now, Alan Mulally's on your board, too. He's an old friend of the show from when he was at Ford. I see you uh, doing some business with Ford, but also Lamborghini, <laughs> which I think has uh, maybe the greatest engineering in the world. So what is your role there? So what's awesome is, you know, traditionally, polymeric parts are molded and casted, injection molding. Right. That's a $300 billion market mm-hmm. that is really cumbersome to introduce new products. We craft parts with light. We have the very first 3D printed parts ever on a production vehicle out of Detroit. Ford announced in January, we've got parts on the Ford Mustang, F-150 truck, and replacement parts on the Ford Focus. We also have parts on Lamborghini. Where we're really going now is electrical connectors. Jim, electrical connectors is a $60 billion market. These are all molded. 90% of the warranty issues in cars today are electrical failures. 90% of those are caused by failed connectors. Our partners, our customers, now have designs that are twice as good that they've ever seen from molded designs. And so it really opens up new waves of product innovation. That's great. Now, Ellen, is your view that... uh, that this is one of those companies where you could see it come public one day, or have you had enough of that after the last day? (laughs) Well, I tell you, I think the fun's going to be in building it out, and those decisions are are down the road. But if you think about where we started with Adidas, and you think about the the performance factors that went into the creation of that midsole, and now we're taking that and we've, we've parlayed that into a specialized bike seat, 
-hmm. We're working with Riddell with the helmets and moving into a broader area. Think about performance and protection as a segment. Right. And then application after application. We've learned so much about optimizing the front end in the file. We've learned so much about what has to happen post-processing to get a really excellent part for our customers. And it's really taking that ecosystem and that process and the digital manufacturing be at the center of it and really scaling that. Now, uh, we know about the, th the uh, 3D, not so great, and some of these other ones that are that kind of fallen by the wayside. But Arconic and HP have tried this, and they're still not really getting any scale is it because of this, uh, the digital light synthesis that that's the difference between what they're doing and what you're doing? Yeah, this is, you know, this is an area that's been around for 25, 30 years. Right. right? With it's always promise. A lot of promise, but it's been a prototyping technology. Yes. We've cracked the code on how to do 3D printing 100 to 1,000 uh, times faster. We've really focused on materials that have the properties to be a finished part and we have an amazing business model, right? We have the world's first uh, piece of manufacturing hardware ever to go out via subscription model. So it's infinitely upgradable, mm -hmm. right? We have an install base that's growing, approaching 1,000 printers globally now in 14 countries. And with that, it's got really good visibility and revenue because contracts are going beyond three years now. Right. And it becomes a really important part to future-proof people from obsolescence. And why now, El? Why I know that, that, that Joe's were you know, just going up to the executive chairman, but why get started in a whole new thing? I mean, well, you know, so I always said that if I were going to go back full time, it had to be compelling. Okay. It had to be something that I really was passionate about. And, and Joe has built a phenomenal team of entrepreneurs that are just have been just tremendous to work with as a board member and even better to work with as the CEO. And I think really pulling us together in a way as we can scale mm -hmm. I think it's just going to be a lot of fun working with Joe, continuing to work with Joe. I think it's going to be well, a great opportunity. Well, excellent. Congratulations to you Thank and you. to you. Thank you, sir. All right. This is a private company. That's Ellen Coleman. She's the new president and CEO of Carbon. And Joe DeSimone, who's the co-founder and executive chairman. Very exciting company. You'll see their football helmets tonight. Uh, Riddell is everywhere. Uh, that's their technology. It's inside the helmet that's really important. We have money's back in. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.